Hi everyone, what I want to do is go over uh, exam one. So the scores were uh, a little low, um, lower than I was hoping. Uh, the median was about a C minus, um, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, and just want to make everyone aware that certainly the future exams are not going to be easier, um, but uh, anyway. Uh, and there's not going to be any extra credit or anything like that. Um, but uh, let's still go over exam one. Uh, I think it would benefit most people or it, a lot of people to go over it and uh, understand exactly where they went wrong. All right. So problem one, a person invests 100 today and 20, uh, $200 20 years later. All right. So let's draw a time diagram. Start off. Zero. Uh, so we're looking at the end of 40 years. Okay, so um, 100 now and 200 20 years later. So I'm going to do this the way I think is the easiest. Some people did it uh, slightly different ways. Um, I think this is the easiest. So we're given that I-52, um, well, sorry, we're given, uh, we don't know what I-52 is for the first 15 years. Okay, so we're dealing with years, so let's just work with uh, effective annual interest rates. So we don't know what this is, the effective annual interest rate for the first 15 years, because we don't know what I-52 is for the first 15 years. Okay. All right, but we're given for the uh, next 25 years that um, D12 discount compounded monthly is 0.06. Okay. So let's figure out what the uh, effective annual interest rate corresponding to that is. Don't know what it is, but we're going to figure this out in a moment. All right, so um, yeah. So very few people uh, got discount versus uh, interest correctly. I don't really understand why. It's not really that hard. But anyway, um, we're not dwelling on uh, discount for the rest of the course. So if you really dislike it, it's not a huge deal. So nominal discount compounded monthly is 0.06. So that means uh, plug into our formula. One minus one minus d twelve point oh six over twelve. So one over twelve. That's going to be point oh five eight three eight. Okay, so that means d. Uh, sorry, we, we just got d. What we're looking for is the effective annual interest rate corresponding to D12 is 0.06. So we solved for D. Now we can solve for I, which is D over one minus D. 0 0.05838 over one minus 0 0.05838. And that's gonna be uh, about 0.062. Okay. All right, so the equivalent effective annual interest rate or just the effective annual interest rate for the next, for the last 25 years is um, 0 0.062, 6.2%. Okay, so uh, we know the accumulated value is 2000 at the end of 40 years. Um, some people did everything, uh, you know, how much do you have at the end of 15 years, then at the end of 20 years, then at the end of 40 years. I think most people who did that got it wrong because that gets, uh, you know, as I always said, it's not a good way to do things. It gets real messy real quick. Um, and you, know, you obviously cannot do that for annuities. If you had Excel, you could basically write a recursive program, but you, you don't have Excel here. You could do Excel, I'm just not gonna give you any credit. So, um, 
So anyway, uh, let's see what 100 does. It earns I, it earns uh, effective annual interest at I for 15 years. We don't know what I is, we're solving for it. So it earns 15 years of interest at this interest rate I, okay? And then for the next 25 years, it earns interest at 0.062 per year. So 1.062, to the 25, that's what the 100 does at the end. You know, That's the accumulated value of the 100 after uh, 40 years. Again, it earns 15 years of interest at this unknown interest rate I, and then earns 25 years of interest at this interest rate of 0.062, okay? On the other hand, 200 earns 20 years of interest at an interest rate of 0.062. Okay. It's made at 20, year 20, the end of year 20, t equals 20. And uh, yeah, earns 20 years of interest. Okay. All right, so just take this. Solve for i, you get i is 0 0.0751, which is all fine and dandy, but that's not what I asked you for. I asked you for what is the nominal um, discount rate compounded weekly. Uh, sorry, I asked you for I-52 for the first 15 years. Okay. So we just have to plug into our formula. We have the equivalent effective annual interest rate. So the formula is it's 52, one plus your interest rate, 1.0751 to the one over 52 minus one. Uh, let me make that a little neater. That, need to waste time here. Um, one point zero seven five one. And you get point oh seven two five, very close to I as you, you know it better be. Just like here, everything is pretty close to each other, d twelve, d and and I. Um, but anyway, so this is my answer. This is what I-52 is. Okay, two, uh, this is basically uh, the way the, um, the actually example uh, in lecture is basically the same problem. Only difference is um, instead of a fixed, I think that was like a fixed maintenance cost, whereas this is a percentage of what the actual uh, price is. Um, anyway, employee costs 5,000 for employee, per employee rather, so five year period, five employees. So 5,000 per employee at the end of each month. So draw a time diagram here. Yeah, and as you see, this is really a problem on annuities, basically, practically speaking. That's why I like this. Um, this is really an annuity due, uh, sorry, annuity immediate. Uh, but anyway, all right, so there's, of course, 60 months, uh, 5 times 12. So uh, each employee, there's five of them. So it's 5,000. This should be no surprise. This is exactly what we've been doing multiple times. 
uh, sorry, that's 5,000. All right, so the accumulated value here is, and if you want to do present value, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Well, we have five employees, so five times 5,000. Um, So this earns uh, 59 periods of interest uh, and monthly interest rate is 0.03%. So it's 1.003, 59. This earns 58 months of interest. Uh, plus uh, second to last one earns one period of interest. Okay, so this is going to be 25,000 times one minus 1.003, add one to the highest power, 60 over one minus 1.03. And this is this nice big number, 1640. Seven nine zero uh, oh two five, and again, just to remind you, if you're wondering why we do things like this, the, the logic here is that uh, all these employee costs um, are basically, um, you know, money that you could have invested at this interest rate. So if you invested the five thousand at this interest rate, you you know you would uh, that would accrue fifty nine periods of interest, et cetera, et cetera. If you invested this five thousand here at t equals two, that would earn fifty eight months of interest at this interest rate point oh three percent monthly, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a way you have to think about uh, the the proper way to think about um, uh, any kind of expense that you're making. We're just doing the same kind of logic for both machines and employees. Okay, and we'll see um, which time value costs are smaller. Okay, so the machine is very similar. Uh, so 60. Okay, so you purchase this machine at, uh, well, uh, for price of X. So let's say X is a price. And the maintenance costs per month at the end of each month is 1% of the machine price. Okay. So 1% of X is 0.01X. Right, so we keep going. Okay. So these are the costs associated to the machine. So costs are positive. So getting your scrap back, that would be positive, which we say is five, uh, sorry, it'd be negative, negative, negative. And you can sell it for 500,000. So uh, the accumulated value of X, 1.003 to 60. Okay. Um, yeah, and same thing as before. Uh, you take just geometric series. Um, this would be 0.01X, uh, 1.003 to 59. Second, uh, minus five hundred thousand. Um, so if you add this all up, so uh, same thing as before. This is uh, one minus one point oh oh three to the sixty. 
over one minus 1.003 times 0.01x. So we get 1.85321x minus 500,000. Okay, so uh, we set these two to be equal. Um, well, I'm running out of room, so I'm just gonna write it uh, down here and I'll erase it in a second. So we have this 1.85321x Minus 500,000 equals uh, 1,647,090 uh, 1, to so solve for x, you get 1,000,000. 155, 179, and 41 cents. All right, uh, let's get rid of that. Give me a second. Okay, so uh, number three, um, basically just like we've done multiple times, no surprises or secrets here. So, um, yeah, let's say A of T is for Jen. Okay, so, um, Right, so her accumulation function is going to be, well, in general, um, it's going to be, uh, so uh, yeah, just write the effective, um, the equivalent effective annual interest rate is going to be um, this well uh, it's usually i6 over 6 i6 is i so it's 1 plus i over 6 whole thing to the 6 minus 1 Okay, so uh, yeah, and if, if A of T is Jen's accumulation function, I'm going to add one to this. Okay, so rid of this minus one here. That's so one plus I over six to six T. T is in years. Okay. So it's one plus I over six to the six T. So just like before a of 20 minus a of, um, so it's 10 months, the last, so the last two months of, of the 20th year is going to be 19 uh, plus 10 over 12. So last two months of the first year is 10 over 12, zero plus 10 over 12. So uh, last two months of the second year would be one plus 10 over 12. The last two months of the 20th year is 19 plus 10 over 12. Okay, so uh, sorry, she deposits X. At the very beginning, that's her initial deposit. So it's X times this. Okay. Um, all right, let's hope I don't run out of space. So we have X. Uh, no need to write brackets here.
one plus i over six to the six times uh, um, sorry, six times 20. Okay, well, that's just 120, so I'm just gonna erase that and put 120 here. So it's six times 19 and over 12. Well, I'll just dump that into a calculator and you get 119. Same pattern as it was with the homeworks and the class example. Uh, sorry. So that's a 19 here. So again, six times 19 plus 10 over 12 is just 119. Uh, and like before, if you um, uh, factor out an X times one plus I over six to 119, you're gonna get X I over six. So some people kind of did this right. They screwed up a little bit, but didn't show a lot of work. If you screw things up and then don't show work, I can't give you much, I can't give you credit, so, um, but anyway. All right, so Chris is much easier. So this is the interest earned in the last uh, 10 months, sorry, the last two months of the 20th year. The amount you have after 20 years minus the amount you have uh, after 10 months in the, night, in the 20th year. Okay, um, so Chris deposits 6x, say B of T is his accumulation function, and he earns simple interest at an interest rate of I, and we're trying to figure out what I is. So remember, this is how simple interest works. It's one plus I T. Okay, this is initial deposit. So um, yeah, same thing. The amount of interest earned at in the last two months of the 20th year is B of 20, the amount in the account after 20 full years minus the amount in the account after 10 months uh, into the 20th year. So it's 19. Yeah, 19 plus 10 over 12, 6x1 plus 20t minus 6x1 plus 19, 10 over 12, i, should have a bracket here, but whatever. All right, simplify this, you got IX. So add these two together, or uh, equate these two together. IX over six, one plus I over six to the 119 is IX. Uh, so as usual, you cancel the IXs, this becomes one, <clears throat> so we get, one plus I over six. So 119 is just equal to six. So for I get 0 0.09102. All right, uh, so number four, slight variation on the homework. This is actually a little easier than the homework. Um, so you make the initial deposit into an account earning effective compound interest rate I for full years that money is in the account and earn simple interest of 6% for fraction of the year that money is in the account, okay? So we're given that the account is fully withdrawn once you hit 15,000, okay? So this is just a little different than the homework problem. And yet you can't just do exactly what I did in the homework. You have to think a little bit. 300 level math course, I was supposed to think. Um, 
Okay, so uh, 5,000. So 10 months into the 12th year, that's 11 full years. Remember the 12th year is T equals 11 to 12, just like the first year is T equals zero to one. Second year is T equals one to two, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So for 11 full years, we're going to have 5,000 times one plus I to the 11th. Now that amount sits in the account for 10 months earning simple interest. So this amount is going to be multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.06, 0 0.06 simple interest times 10 over 12. You get 10 months into the um, Uh, one second. Yeah, this occurs 10 months into the 12th year, so it earns 10 months of simple interest. Uh, so I shouldn't have that. Okay, so this is going to be 5250, five, 1 plus i to the 11th. Look at this is important to understand. You earn 11, 11 years of interest at an interest rate of I, where it's compound interest. So 5,000 earns this 11 years of interest to be 5,001 plus I to the 11th. And that earns this whole thing here, earns 10 more months of interest at simple interest rate of 0.06. So we take what I just circle times one plus 0 0.06 times 10 over 12. That's how simple interest works. All right, so solve for I 0.10014. All right, uh, slight variation uh, to one of the homeworks. Uh, I think I had a K there for one of the homeworks. Um, here, there is no K. Instead, you're solving for um, D365, otherwise basically the same problem. Um, I think so. Anyway. Um, all right, fun day. So fund A has a force of interest, point O two four T. Uh, so the amount we have, so they have the same accumulated value, uh, fund A and fund B, when T equals three. So uh, for fund A, we're depositing 100 and we're letting it sit in this account for three years, earning this force of interest of 0. 0.04. 24t. So it's, the formula is 100e to the integral 0 to 3.024t dt 100 um, t squared over 2. So it's 0 So this is going to be 100 e point oh one two times nine. 100 e to point one oh eight equals one eleven four oh four seventy seven. And just like in the first problem, very few people uh, understood the difference between discount and um, interest, okay? All right, so let's say I is the effective annual interest rate for fund B corresponding to some nominal discount rate compounded uh, daily, okay? So if this account earns I interest per year, deposit 100 into the account, sits in the account for three years, 
And the accumulated value, well, fund A and fund B have the same accumulated value. That's 111.40471. Uh, sorry, 77. Looks like a one. All right, solve for I. 0.036656. D is going to be I over one plus I. Plot that into your calculator. 0.03536. Now you use your formula, and I found this perplexing because you, you know you have to memorize any formulas. It's just um, anyway. So it's uh, three sixty-five one minus one minus uh, d point zero oh, three five three six one over three sixty-five. Well, three six. That's your answer. All right, uh, number six. Uh, again, very similar to homework, slightly different in that we're loaned, uh, and you know we have a loan of x and one of the payments is x. But otherwise, it's basically the same problem. So. Um, yeah, so we're looking at a time span of six years. Uh, whatever, get rid of this. They're alone 300 at the end of years one and two. And loaned X at the end of year three. Some people had only one X in this whole problem, which I don't understand, but anyway. You pay his loan back with payments of X at the end of years four, 400 at the end of years five, six. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I have said always, it really doesn't matter at all in these problems where you, how you time everything, as long as you're consistent. Um, so you can time value everything at the beginning, T equals zero, take the present value of everything or time value everything at at the end, t equals six, the accumulated value of everything. Um, what did I do? Let's see, it's a question. I time valued everything at t equals three. Uh, t equals four works too. Uh, all right, so this is the cash in. This is how much you're, this is what you're paying. So time value, everything at T equals three, an interest rate of 7% effective annual interest rate. So 300, 1.07. So let's cruise one, two periods of interest. This accrues one period of interest. And again, if you grumble and complain that I don't like this, this is, this is weird. And this is just the way loans work. Everything is time value. A loan is, um, you know, the way loans work, as you've been seeing uh, in the uh, annuities video, and as we'll see, um, well, loans, loans are annuities, but uh, basically the way annuities and loans and stuff work is cash in equals cash out time value. So. So for example, the price of an annuity is just the time value of all the payments at t equals zero. It's just the present value. All right, so this is the cash in time value at t equals three. X is X at t equals three. That's how much X is worth. So uh, t equals four, we discount this by one year. And even if you don't like doing it this way, it's very important to understand discounting versus accruing interest. You know, in problems, we'll see you have to be able to discount stuff, move stuff back and forth in time. So at t equals three, x is uh, worth, well, x times um, one over 
this 400 here. Is worth one over 1.07 squared, discounted by two years, and then discount the last 400 by three years. That's five, four, three. All right, so solve for X at 17464. All right, hopefully uh, that was helpful. Um, that's seven. Yeah, and don't be shy about asking me questions. Um, you know, if, uh, there's definitely people that are not doing well, so please do come. Uh, I'm not going to curve. I grade very leniently, so I'm absolutely not curving in this course. So if you you know you're in a D, you know, um, fifty to sixty range. You're in trouble. You're you're in uh you know deep waters. You might fail the course. Um, you know I I told I you know I, I warned people that this is a tough course, and if you did not do well in Calc two, you're not going to probably do well here. But you know proceed at your own caution. If you don't heed my advice, that then you know I've taught this course I don't even know how many times seven maybe seven times at this point, maybe even eight times. Oh. So, Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, so long. Take care, and we're already almost up to exam two. It's going to be given on Friday. Amazing. But anyway, uh, yeah. See everyone, or uh, yeah, talk to everyone later. So long. Take care. Bye bye.